Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello. My name is Eugenia Kim. I am a TF for Computer Science E1. This is a video of the week. Today we're going to talk about editing a digital image. I'm going to show you how to do some basics like cropping, selecting, changing the size of an image, and a few other things using Photoshop, a program from Adobe. So we are going to start by getting a copy of Adobe Photoshop. Now some of you may be aware that Photoshop does cost money and some of you may think it's a little on the high end. Never fear, Adobe does offer Photoshop as a 30 day trial. It's fully usable and that is what we're going to use today. So if you go to www.adobe.com, you can see right here, um, we're going to then go to downloads. If you mouse over it, you can see that there's a trial downloads option. Click on that. Now it has brought us to the downloads page. If you come down, or rather if you click on print publishing, it should take us down to this section with all the print publishing software and here we have Photoshop CS2. Click on the try link and then you'll have the option of Windows or Mac. We're going to click on Mac for this demo and you will see that it will ask you to register and download and you'll just need your email address and to create a password it also does ask for some other registration information such as your name and maybe where you're from but otherwise it's pretty much worth it now I've already downloaded and installed this demo so I'm going to go to Adobe Photoshop CS2 which is the latest version available I'm going to open up the program and so the first thing we're going to do is go up to file and then we're going to open an image and I have one on the desktop here called eggs. And we're going to open that and ta-da! We have a picture of fried eggs, tomatoes, and toast. First thing you might always want to do is decide the image size. So this lets you decide how many, how many inches wide, how many inches tall, your resolution, whether you want to make it so that the width and the height are tied to each other or if you can change the width and the height independent of each other. I'm going to make it so it's only 7 inches wide and click OK. I'm going to leave it at 72 pixels per inch and it's made it very small so I'm going to resize our window and also if you go up to Navigator you can zoom in or zoom out as much as you want. I'm going to zoom in to 100% and then it's it's okay but I still want to change the size of things so you can go to canvas size which lets you determine the area or the size of the area that you're going to work in um, since a lot of photos are printed as 7 by 5s I'm going to change the height from 5.25 to five. First thing you might want to do is maybe you only want to work with a part of the image so you can always go to the crop tool click on that and you just click on the screen anywhere and then drag over the area that you want to keep and then just press return there you have the part of the image that you want to work with Another option is to use the select tool or the rectangular marquee tool as it is called and 
Another option is to use the rectangular marquee tool, which make, lets you select an area in a rectangular shape. Um, other options include a elliptical marquee tool, a single row marquee tool, single column marquee tool. Or if you don't want such a clean shape, you can go one tool down to the lasso tool, which lets you do, draw an irregular shape. And that will also select an area. And that gives you the polygonal lasso tool, which is a little more angular, or the magnetic lasso tool, which will let you trace along the edges of an existing object. We're going to go to adjusting the image. Um, one thing that I always like to do first is adjust levels. I like to think of levels as letting me choose the purity of my white and the purity of my blacks and also adjusting the levels of the amount of grays or the range of grays um, that you have in your image. And so the right hand arrow can be dragged along and as you drag it along it will brighten your image or darken it and you want to drag until you get your and the whitest thing in your picture as white as possible. And then you go to the other end where the black arrow is, you drag it along until you get as your darkest color is as dark as you want it, and this will bring out your shadows. And then the gray arrow in the middle lets you adjust in between that range. And this spiky looking chart above all of them is your histogram. So let's click OK. Another thing I would like to do is go to adjustments. Sometimes I use curves instead of levels. And again, it does something pretty similar where it lets you adjust sort of the range of tones that you might have in your image. Afterwards, I usually go to brightness contrast and that directly affects your how bright your image is so you can get it really washed out looking. Or you could up the contrast so that everything's looks very pixelated and blocky, or you could bring it down so it's very faded and very blurry. Usually, if you've adjusted your curves or levels well, there's not much you have to do with the brightness and contrast. But if you do like that Andy Warhol look, um, contrast is a great one tool to play with. If you look in adjustments, there's many other things you can do, but basically, if you've taken a great photo, you usually only need to adjust your levels and you're pretty good to go. Other tools that you might want to play with, you can either play with the paint brush and paint all over your image, or you could take the blur tool and blur everything in your image around. Next to that you have the dodge tool and the blur t burn tool and the sponge tool, and those generally let you work on one part of your picture exactly to either make it darker or lighter. And everyone's favorites, filters. There's a whole bunch of options there. You might have fun with the artistic color pencil. It'll take your image and it will make it look like it was hand drawn. Once you're done with that, you can go to File, Save. It'll save it, at, it'll want to save it as a PSD. But if you're going to, which will let you go back and make changes in layers and things like that. But if you're all done, you can change the format to anything you like out of the options there. If you're going to print a photograph of it later, you probably want to save it as a JPEG. And click Save. And there you go. Well, that was one way to edit a digital image um, that you might have on your computer. There are many other ways and other programs. Uh, that will let you modify your images, but I hope you found this method useful. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video of the week.